Oh, hey guys, look, we're doing fanfix again. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Now it's time to continue Silent Ponyville. We haven't done this one in a little while, so let's get back into the story. <clears throat> there it is, Pinky Pie said as she pulled out a map of Ponyville. She'd gotten ba gone back to the library to find it. Luckily, she had an uncanny ability to find things what she needed very quickly. She took a red marker in her mouth and drew a circle through with an X through it as the road with the chasm in it. She then placed smaller X's on several houses she tried to gain access to while trying to find any pony. The town appeared empty. Abandoned. What happened here? She asked herself. Looking at the map of X's, she only investigated a small portion of Ponyville. But there were always ponies either at home or wandering around. On bad weather days, they'd always be in their homes, where they'd, there'd at least be a notice of some kind of a lot of ponies would be leaving. Plus, why was there that bottomless pit at the edge of town? I need to get to Sugar Cube Corner. If I can make it there, I can get my hot air balloon and try to see if there's any Pegasus eye in the sky. They may might have an explanation for the fog. Pinkie Pie said conf confirming her plan of action in her head. She also admitted to being worried about Gummy. She hoped that he be, would be all right. She quickly checked her route on the map before packing the map and pen in her bag. She'd mark any more unusual occurrences she'd encounter in Ponyville on the map for her to remember. She stepped back out into the chilly day with something cold and wet landed on her nose. Huh? She said, trying to see the end of her nose. She shook her head a little, then looked up in the sky. Small specks of snow began to appear as they slowly fell to the ground. Snow? But it's summer, Pinky said in a shocking stare at the white spectacle. She could see her breath, but she hadn't realized it was cold enough for snow out. The Pegasi controlled the weather, so they must be up there right now. She headed out in a gallop towards Sugar Cube Corner. Suddenly, Pinky heard a static sound coming from her bag. Was that a miniature phonograph making noise again? It certainly picked random times to do so. Pinky was knocked out of her thoughts when she saw the outline of a figure in the fog. Oh, somebody is here, she said, her hope rising. She quickly ran faster to, figure, to the figure. As she got closer, though, she couldn't help but get the strong feeling that something wasn't right, as her phonograph only grew louder. Hey, what's going on here? She instantly asked before even assessing who it was. She stopped shortly, th though, as she, when she got a good look at the pony, and she let out a high-pitched scream. <laughs> the pony was barely a pony anymore. Its coat and mane was gone, replaced with the look of rotting flesh. It was trying to live. Um, one of its front legs was missing. There was a missing chunk of flesh on it from its back. Its eyes looked like they had been gouged out. Several teeth looked like they had been knocked out with, a, with holes bleeding, and several lacerations covered its body. Uh, are you all right? Pinkie Pie said, taking a step back from the pony. Her initial reaction was to figure out if it was in pain, but her gut told her to stay away, This that this thing didn't want her help. The phonograph in her bag started ringing off the hook. The fleshy mass lunged at Pinky, its teeth bearing to strike down. Pinky cried out and jumped away as the creature fell where she was standing. Its teeth sinking into the dirt, Pinky took a few steps away from the creature as it brought its head back up, a mouthful of dirt in its teeth. It growled as the dirt dribbled out of its mouth, soaking the dirt with its blood. It began to slowly lumber towards Pinky again, growling as it seemed to smell her out. S stay back! Stay back! Pinky cried out, trying to pedal away from the terrifying creature. It growled and moaned, dripping a trail of blood as it was intent on tracking her. The creature terrified Pinky. It looked like it was on the verge of death, yet it wouldn't die. Instead, it was intent on attacking her. Every fiber in her being told her to run away. Run as fast as far away as you can from this creature. Stay away from me, she cried before her legs finally took action and ran around the creature, quickly galloping away. The creature went to lunge again, its teeth implanting on dirt once more as Pinky ran past. As she got farther and farther away, the phonograph in her bag began to settle down before going silent once more. She collapsed into a sitting position as she breathed heavily. 
Her heart was beating a mile a minute in her throat. What was that thing? Why had it attacked her? Why did it look like a pony? Why had she not seen any pony else but that thing? Sugar, cube, corner, Pinky panted, trying to calm her nerves. She bit down on her arm, pinching herself to remind her she wasn't dreaming. She was in control of herself. She could run away. But from what she saw, this was not a dream. She shook her head and got back on her hooves and began to run again. The door to her room in Sugar Q Corner creaked open slowly as Pinky pushed it. The inside of her room was pitch black. She couldn't see anything past the frame of her door. She carefully dug into her bag and pulled out the lantern, holding it in her mouth as she turned the knob. The wick came to life, the flame shining. She stepped into her room, the light of the lantern illuminating what she couldn't see before. She looked in shock at the state of her room. It looked like it hadn't been used in years. The wallpaper was rotting and peeled. The w wooden floor was splintered and falling apart. The curtains were riddled with holes. Dust was thick and it, the air was stagnant. Pinky looked around confused before placing the lamp on, down gently on the table so she could see the whole room. Was I gone for a long time? Pinky asked as she stepped through the room, hearing the floor creak and moan as it adjusted to her weight. Twilight wouldn't have used a spell to send me into the future if she was going to help me, would she? Pinky said, not sure what to think. The spell did say it would be disorienting. I guess this could all just be um, part of the side effect. The photograph began to let off a, st a soft static. Pinky stopped in her tracks as she listened to it. The last time it went off, she met that creature, and it had gotten louder as she had gotten closer to it. It looked around the room hastily, but she didn't see anything that looked like a monster. Come down, Pinkie Pie. There's nothing too serious to worry about. Let's just check and see if Gummy is here. Grab the balloon and head for the sky. You can put this creepiness behind you then, Pinky said as she grabbed the lantern in her teeth and quickly pushed the bathroom door open. Gummy, she called despite the lantern in her teeth. She looked into the bathroom and nearly dropped the lantern. The walls were smeared with blood. Bloody hoof prints hastily scribbled words. The curtains had been torn to shreds. The remains barely hanging onto the poles that used to hold them. Cake covered in meh sorry caked blood covered the outside of the tub the whole thing looked like a massacre G gummy are you in here her words muffled but she had to check she had to look her mind screamed to leave but she had to find out if it, if he was here or not she took a few steps into the bathroom her hooves echoing loudly as she stepped onto the tile the only relief was given was the photograph her quieter as she stepped in further she placed the lantern down on the sink and gulped the best she could. The room stank of mold and blood. It made her want to gag. She carefully checked around the tub and curtains, only seeing more blood. She turned to look at the walls, getting a chance to read what was written. Hast written hastily in scribbled blood, Help me. Pain. He hungers. The words sent chills down her back. What did they mean? He hungers. The words echoed in her head. Was that referring to Gummy? But Gummy had no teeth. The only thing he could do was swallow mushy gator food that she brought, bought for him. What happened in her bathroom? Why would this have happened here? Her mind was reeling with questions, desperately needing comfort of her friends right now. She stepped away from the wall. There was only one place left she had to check, and that was the tub itself. She very carefully leaned over her head over the edge of the tub, looking down into it. The tub laid half of a rotten mess of a tiny green gator. Pinky threw her hooves over her mouth as the tears began to stream out her eyes. It was unmistakable. That was Gummy. He looked like he had been there for a long time. Pinky's stomach was moving into her throat as she stared. But why was this happening? She the, was the question bounced around in her head again and again and again. She needed answers. It was then that she noticed a bright red ribbon. It was tied immaculately into a bow or on something that was sticking out of Gummy's mouth. Pinky swallowed as she stared at the item, not sure what it meant. The item was clean. It was free of blood and it looked like it looked like Gummy was trying to give it to her. Pinky gingerly lowered 
her hoof and took the item from Gummy's mouth, the item slipping out with a bit of ease. She was able to look at it clearly now, realizing it was a key. The key had the symbol of a star on it. She didn't quite get, know what it meant, but Gummy had given it to her in his last days. She had to keep it. She gently placed the key into her bag, remembering just then that the photograph was still giving off a quiet buzz. She carefully grabbed her lantern and stepped out of the bathroom, closing the door behind her. She placed the lantern down on the ground and she wiped her face, hiccuping. Gummy, I'm so sorry, she cried into her hoof as desperately as trying to calm down. I promise I'll give you up the proper burial you deserve one day. She held back another sob. Please forgive me for not being there for you, she said as her shoulders shook. Her attempts at calming down were failing. The tears were pouring out stronger now. She just wanted to sit there and cry. Her mind snapped away when she heard the buzzing grow louder, turning into the high-pitched ringing. Whatever was setting it off was getting closer. That meant she didn't have time she needed to sit there and cry her heart out. She needed to move her fate that befell Gummy would befall her too. She hastily grabbed the lantern and ran across the room to the closet where she kept the balloon. The ringing grew louder. Her heart was racing a mile a minute. She grabbed the closet doors and ripped them open. A high-pitched scream erupted as a white blur latched onto Pinky's face. Pinky whirled her head around frantically as pain struck all over her face. She scrambled her hooves and rammed her head against the wall, erupting another screech from the blur. She whirled her head and flung it across the room. Pinky breathed heavily as she felt blood trickling down the side of her face. She turned to look at her attacker. Her eyes opened in shock. Shka! Writhing on the floor was what looked like the upper half of a hairless young filly, its white skin beginning to rot on its bone, its two front hooves grasping for land as it's flailed on its back, its eyes covered by a white bandana as its black mouth opened, a long tongue flicking out as it let out its wailing cry. The screech on the thing struck her ears harder than the loud ringing of the photograph. Pinkie Pie was speechless, seeing this creature that resembled a filly. Her stomach did a flip. A full-grown pony was one thing. The creature found its way right side up. Its wailing screeches quieted down as it seemed to be tasting the air, its tongue flicking about. Pinky winced as she tried to take a step back, only to find a wall there. The creature's head snapped to look straight at Pinkie Pie. It let out another wail as, with shocking speed as it began to crawl straight at her. In a blind rush, she quickly jumped to the side, the creature slamming its head straight into a wall. It let out a wailing cry as it flailed its head in pain. Pinky's heart pounded in her throat as she watched the creature. Its wailing cries made it sound pitiful. It had left a sizable blood stain on the wall, and its head was bleeding profusely. It flailed its head back and forth, and Pinky walked right out to reach out to help it. She wanted to stop its pain and let it know everything was all right. The creature let out a blood-curdling scream as it rushed at her again. Its mouth clamped down on her leg. Pinky cried out as she flailed her leg, trying to get the creature off, but it held on with a tight grip. She began to run around, trying to shake the creature, but its grip seemed to tighten. She couldn't hear anything beyond the screams of her beating heart. She stopped next to a wall and slammed the creature hard against the wall. The creature was still there. She slammed it hard again. She slammed it again and again and again, warm blood spattering across the wall and onto her coat. She slammed it with all her might against the wall. The creature slid off as life escaped its body, collapsing on the floor with a thud. Pinky's breath filled her lungs with fire as her body shook with adrenaline. She looked down at her bleeding leg and then at the creature she'd just finished off. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, Pinky said in a shaky breath. As she stepped backwards from the creature, she hadn't meant to kill it. Did it deserve death? It had attacked her, but it was the right thing to do. She sat on the ground panting, her body shaking, her mind reeling. It, she looked down at her body and saw a thaw splatter of its blood against her coat. Her stomach flipped again, its contents about to come up. What have I got done? She gasped, trying to cool her burning lungs. Why did it have to come to this? She shook her head violently. She didn't want any of this. But it was happening. This was no dream that she could wake up from, and it was all and it would all go away. This was here and it was real. 
She took a deep breath and tried to stand on her shaking legs. Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Fluttershy, Applejack, Twilight, any pony. I need you right now, she said, shakily walking towards her closet. She grabbed a lantern and looked into the darkness. The balloon was there, the basket holding the deflated balloon. Her hope rising in her heart as she placed the lantern down and began to pull the cloth from the basket. Large holes riddled the balloon. It was unusable for flight. Pinky broke it out into sobbing tears, crying into the hole-ridden cloth. The phonograph had finally stopped ringing.